Good evening, everybody. I see everybody's probably still alive after the eclipse. <laughs> Just a uh, true testament on how much media controls our lives. Alan, good evening, man. How are you? We don't have anybody to join us tonight, so we'll just kind of talk a little bit about the fishing report on what's happening and uh, what's kind of going around um, on the Bago system and uh, giving up-to-date uh, reports on Green Bay and um, kind of what we've been doing here this last week. Um, fishing's been absolutely incredible. Um, walleyes are... I think after tomorrow, I'll probably be fully spawned out, I would guess. At least, you know, the next two days, the, the fish will probably be fully spawned out on the Wolf River. Water temperature, uh, about 48, 49 degrees uh, today. Um, still a lot of uh, a lot of good currents. You know, the, the nice thing is for fishing anyway, is at least from like New London down, you know, water's starting to get into the trees a little bit. And truthfully, when the sun comes out and that water temperature warms up, that's right where we've been getting a lot of the fish. Um, it's really tight to the trees and right up into the trees. Um, but uh, the, uh, you know, the fish are, are still, they're just kind of scattered everywhere. There's really hasn't been, you know, one location that's been better than the others. You know, we've had some better success up further north um you know just because a lot of those bigger females have been up there and obviously the males are following the females and uh, but uh, you know a lot of fish are coming down they're spawned out i know last night for a lot of the guys on the rafts around uh, fleeces and um you know up by uh, new london shyocht and uh, they just absolutely hammered them um so a big big push of females are starting to come back and uh, we'll see that, you know, through the weekend here for sure. And then after that, it's going to be, you know, a lot of males and back to uh, uh, dragon crawlers and, you know, fishing shallow again for, you know, casting crankbaits and all kinds of different fun ways to catch these fish. Uh, hopefully the white bass starts showing up when I know there are a few guys that got a couple down in Oshkosh. But when I say a couple, I mean like two or three. So Nothing super hot and heavy, but I, I expect here by the end of the week and into the weekend, we're going to see, you know, influx of white bass coming into the river and uh, the walleyes will, you know, you're going to start to see a lot of the bigger females and stuff come back down. Um, you know, as this water temperature changes to, uh, I always tell people uh, a couple things that, you know, to look for is once the frogs start chirping, um, the, the turtles, you start seeing turtles on the logs and you get close to that 50 degree mark it's always kind of my time where i'll switch over from minnows to crawlers um don't know why it works but it's just been one of those things that uh once we uh once we get to that water temperature um i will definitely sw start switching over to crawlers and plastics maybe a little bit more not saying that the minnows don't work you know the fatheads and that are always going to work even um, you know, late, you know, later on in the year too, the, the minnows, you know, will definitely catch some fish, but, uh, the, you know, the current, uh, the scent, everything else with fish and crawlers just seems to work a little bit better. And, you know, we start dragging crawlers, uh, along some of these long straightaways as these fish are just kind of sitting in the current, heading back home, um, just kind of a different change of tactic. And, uh, instead of, uh, you know, vertical jigging or, uh, you know, getting into some of these deeper edges and whatnot. Now it's just uh, find wherever the fastest current is and uh, use your, you know, 
use your boat and stay parallel or perpendicular to the current and just kind of drift down and drag some small jigs or Carolina rigs, um, split shot and a plain, you know, gold hook works really well too. Half a crawler or full crawler and uh, just slip down the current and you'll start picking up the fish. But I think right now, you know, these, these next couple of days here is going to, you're going to see kind of a change, you know, pretty much everything you'll probably be catching is going to be females or spawned out females uh, while the males are still, you know, up in the marshes or hanging out wherever the, uh, you know, the females are dumping their eggs. Um, it's just kind of like that, you know, the rut period for deer hunting, right? You got that week long or two week deal where, you know, nothing's really going on and um, we're kind of getting that tail end of the spawn and uh, the females will dump and the males will stick around and, Hopefully we can start seeing some fish back out into the lakes. As much as I love river fishing, um, there's just something about getting back out into the open water and not having to be bumper to bumper, you know, with boats. And uh, that'll be good for the walleyes. And then once that uh, happens, obviously, then we switch over to the white bass and we're back to bumper boats again. <laughs> so I guess it's uh, we're not done in the river yet. Uh, we've got our first tournament coming up here on the 28th of April. Uh, which is going to be the Bagel Walleye Club. I'll be fishing with a uh, friend, Mike. Um, he uh younger guy and looking forward to uh, getting in the boat and doing some fishing with him. And uh, should be a good season. Should be a lot of fun. Um, up on the bay, we had some pretty warm temperatures up by Ocanto, 43 um, degrees is kind of the magic number the other night. We, I did an all nighter. I think I did like 26 straight hours of, uh, of fishing. It was actually pretty nice. Um, body isn't as young as what it used to be and, um, was a little tired, but, uh, still enjoyed it. Um, fished all day on the river and then headed up to Ocanto and fished all night up there with, uh, Eli and Bud. And, uh, we got some really nice fish, um, drove around for a while, just kind of looking and, it was interesting when we left the river, there really wasn't much happening in the river. Um, you know, we seen a fish here, fish there, and um, didn't really have much of a, you know, a showing coming out of the river and, you know, around the mouth. I expected to be, to, you know, to have a lot more fish around the mouth and kind of over, you know, north and south of the, the mouth there and those shallows and uh, didn't really see much at all. So we went south for a while and just kind of drove around looking at some of the spots that, you know, just some waypoints and um, spots that typically hold fish. And, you know, we'd find a pot of three or four, nothing really, you know, super concentrated. And uh, we drove out, out towards the shoal a little bit more and scanned that down towards uh, Pensaki, um, scanned that. And then we actually went north and uh, we got... You know, a couple miles north of uh, of Ocanto, you know, out just kind of in some random area and uh, seen some fish on the graph. And we just started trolling, um, really didn't, uh, you know, know or really where to start or what to do. So we just found an area and just kind of started trolling around and found that pot of fish. They were active and we just kept going back over the top of it. And every time we go over over the top of those fish, we'd we'd get a couple of sometimes doubles and triples and. It was uh, it was pretty crazy, especially in the dark with uh, with guys. It uh, can be a lot of fun watching those boards and trying to get fish out of the net. And uh, speaking of nets, you know, we picked up one of those Kalen nets, those new ones, and um, not impressed. Uh, for one hundred and fifty dollars, uh, you guys could definitely find a better net than what that thing is. A um, lot of issues with it. The only good part about that net is the fact that it's super lightweight. Uh, very easy to handle and, and pretty strong, um, but the netting material itself and the construction overall uh, definitely needs to go back to the drawing boards. Um, I don't think they really put it to the test a whole lot. Uh, if they did, it was, you know, probably on uh, just a guy that, you know, jig fishes a lot, doesn't use a whole lot of crankbaits and treble hooks uh, because you get a crankbait, you know, in that net and um, it's, you know, it. <laughs> At, you can ask the guys that were in the boat with me the other night. We were saying some pretty choice words, and I was about ready to cut the whole thing apart and toss it in the drink. It was uh, it was brutal. Um, you know, putting fabric around the edge of a net, I don't think, is a very good idea. Treble hooks like fabric, and you get them buried in there, and uh, you're going to have issues. And then that real fine, you know, rubber coating that they use, 
um, you know, Ranger has some of those nets too. And I hate those things because one, it's so easy for the fish to roll around uh, because it's so lightweight and so pliable um, that the fish just start rolling and getting wrapped up. And then the treble hooks get buried inside of there. And it takes you 10, 15 minutes to get a fish out of the net. It's just ridiculous. Uh, you know, going back to either the, the, you know, the real big netting that Fravel used to have was always really good. Never had much issues with that. Uh, the RS net netting that always worked good. And, uh, you know, the rubber nets, you really don't have to worry about much with those rubber nets. So uh, just my opinion, um, you know, I used it now for about a, oh, two weeks, week and a half, two weeks, and really wanted to put some time into it before I said anything. And, uh, you know, reading some com other comments and stuff online, too, pretty much sounds like that's uh, the general consensus with that net is um, the hooks get buried. And it might be good for a jig, you know, guy that's just fishing single hooks on jigs. Um, but if you're doing any trolling or crankbaits or anything like that with trebles, uh, you might want to reconsider. So uh, moving on to that, um, what was working for us, um, we were trolling anywhere in, you know, six to seven feet of water. Or so, and that again was overnight. The water up there was gin clear and uh, the best baits, you know, we threw a lot of everything at them. Um, and we had one bait that definitely outperformed everything else. And that was the number nine hit stick uh, from Berkeley in the um, uh, fire tiger pattern, which was kind of crazy for, um, you know, for how clear the water was and, and whatnot. You know, I thought for sure the purples or the whites, you know, the more natural colors. But I guess if they're eating perch up there, um, that's what they were feeding on. And uh, that one there was definitely the best bait. I've caught a lot of fish on that bait, really kind of growing fond of those hit sticks. Um, they uh, they cast real nice. Uh, they troll real nice. We were trolling them anywhere, you know, 40 to 45 feet back or so, um, doing 1.4 to 1.5. So pretty slow, um, slow troll. Uh, had, you know, obviously like the P10s and floating, you know, the original Rapalas and um, some Husky Jerks and uh, we were trying, you know, pretty much everything, but we could really only get bit on that hit stick. It was kind of, uh, kind of crazy. Um, <clears throat> other colors that we had on, I caught a couple of fish. The, uh, the chrome did pretty good. And then there's a pink, pink and chrome one there as well that, uh, caught some fish. Um, but you know, the majority of our fish came on that, uh, on that fire tiger. So if you're up there and, uh, not getting anything, maybe try throwing some bright stuff on, even with that, that bright, uh, or that clear water. Um, up on the river, again, you know, we, uh, most of the fish, uh, we've been getting, uh, you know, over the weekends was, uh, up shallow again, you know, finding a lot of, of shallow spots, you know, wherever there was grass, the water's come up high enough now that, uh, you've got some areas along the edges of the banks, uh, where the water's into the, into the woods, into the trees, and it's covering a lot of that grass. And we've been, we've been watching walleye spawn in that grass and thrash around here the last oh, four or five days or so. Um, and when you see that, uh, we're literally pitching jigs as close to the edge of that grass as we possibly can. Um, small hair jigs have been working really good. Plain regular jigs have been working, you know, anything that uh, I, I think they're really focused in on like frog style colors, you know, greens, blacks, oranges, like fire tiger type stuff. Um, and then one spot we found uh, just using electronics, kind of motoring up the river. Um, we had some spots uh, below the Northport bridge um, that were holding fish on Friday and uh, they were gone on Saturday. So it just goes to show, you know, how much these fish are moving right now. Um, they, uh, Friday was all pre-spawn, uh, Saturday and the guys Sunday, and today it was all post-spawn. So uh, they were really, really doing their thing here the last couple of days, especially with this water warm up. And um, it's been, uh, it's been a phenomenal bite. So get out and enjoy that. Uh, you're probably gonna have to do a little bit of searching, um, you know, once, once these females spawn, it's going to be a little bit harder to find them on the electronics because they're not going to be all conjugated together. Um, so you're not going to find those big pods like you would as they're getting, you know, as they're staging, getting ready to spawn. So when you're going, when those fish are going up river and, you know, they're getting ready to spawn, all those males are going to be around those females. And, uh, you know, you, you can see them plain as day. And then as these things are dumping, 
Uh, you're just going to want to get into areas that are, you know, just neck down funnels uh, in the system, whether it be by the bridges or, you know, up in the northern part of the Wolf, you know, around New London, Shyocton, um, Hortonville area, any place typically around a corner that narrows down, um, you're just kind of funneling the um, funneling the, the fish into tight spots and just sit on the edges and, uh, you know, and you can pump jigs. Uh, I like using Dubuque rigs this time of the year. Hey, bud. Um, you know, with a, uh, like a three A sounds jig on the bottom, um, on a three way. And then up above that, uh, a long lead with a fly, um, whether you're using, you know, minnows or a piece of crawler or whatnot, whatever, you know, cho your choice, but finding those areas that, uh, are going to have fish kind of funneling down through our key areas to just set up on. And uh, sometimes it doesn't pay to move. If you find an area where, you know, fish are swimming through or just kind of coasting through, just sit there. You know, you're going to have pod after pod after pod of fish kind of coming through. And there's going to be a lot of singles, doubles, and that swimming through too. But, um, you know, dri driving around and traveling around trying to find them uh, now is kind of going to be a mute point. You just kind of got to know where areas are that these fish are going to be cruising through. And uh, that's why dragging crawlers over these long stretches, these long flats uh, is real productive is because you're not really technically focusing on one key spot or casting to one spot. Um, you're just going to drift down and, you know, hopefully these fish as they're swimming by uh, and swimming back down, catch up to one of your baits and um, should be pretty good. Uh, e fishery doing well on hair jigs, trolling back up with salmos, but I'm in the fox from Buffalo to Puckaway. All right, um, I've heard some guys doing some really good stuff down by Princeton too, uh, down on the fox. A uh, lot of fish in the river, yeah. Most fish I've seen in in 20 years. You know, everything this year for us. Um, I haven't been fishing much of the deep holes. I haven't been fishing much down, you know, south of Fremont. Everything I've done so far this year has been, you know, north and uh, everything has been shallow. And to be honest with you, in what now we've been fishing in the boat for well over a month, um, I can honestly say I've probably caught half dozen to 10 fish in that 12 to 13 inch range. All, all, see, all spring season, I have not caught any small fish on the wolf. On the fox, we fished Eureka a few days, and I think the first day Jared and I got into the boat, you know, we were just whaling on 12 to 14 inches and a lot more probably in that 12 to 13, but uh, nothing really worth keeping. So it just goes to show that there's some really good fish in this system, uh, very good year classes all the way around. And uh, we've had fish as high as 26, 27 inches. Uh, a lot of the fish here the last few days have been in that 23 to 25, um, all, all really nice females. Uh, so it's going to be a good, fun uh, summer for sure. Uh, a lot of those 18, 19s too that are, that are solid fish. So um, going to be a good year. What's that? Yeah, that'll be fine. All right. Good night, bud. Love ya. Love ya. <clears throat> Andrew's getting ready to go to bed. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> All right. Good night, mister. <clears throat> Rob, how are you, bud? Um, so the, uh, you know, as these fish kind of migrate back down, uh, what we're going to, you know, start working on is, um, I like, uh, grab a couple of these guys here. Um, some of the jigs, you know, these teardrop style jigs work really well for dragging. Um, they kind of just roll off the bottom really nice, you know, half a crawler on this guy and, you know, colors, um, you know, I guess it depends on the day. I still kind of like the, uh, you know, the purples or, you know, orange and, uh, orange and greens, uh, yellows, uh, even some of the blues. Uh, I've got uh, been playing around with some new paints, and I've got some chrome powder paint uh, that's been pretty awesome, actually. I, I painted up a couple jigs, some custom hair jigs that had this chrome on it, and they've actually done pretty well for me. I'm kind of surprised on how well uh, how well they've worked. So um, just uh, you know, small sixteenth ounce jigs. 
and some sometimes you got to get the uh, get into an eighth ounce, but typically nothing more than that. You don't want to you know be literally laying on the bottom. You want those jigs to just kind of coast and and kind of sift over the tops of uh, the leaves and brush and stuff that's down there. Uh, another really good tactic that I like to do uh, versus just dragging the jigs. The jigs are easy, right? Because you just tie it on, cast it out, and then hold your rod tip up and just let that bait flow along the bottom. Uh, when they bite, you know, a lot of times they'll come in and you know, you'll miss them a lot of times because they'll come in and just suck on the back of the crawler. So one thing that I like to do a little bit different than what most guys do is I will fish a Carolina rig. And what a Carolina rig is, uh, you take your main leader and you put an egg sinker, you know, typically a 16th or an eighth ounce egg sinker up above on your main line, which will be on my braid. And then I, t I put a barrel swivel on. And then for my barrel swivel, I will tie a piece of fluorocarbon, typically a uh, um, oh, eight, uh, six or eight pound test fluorocarbon leader with just a straight, you know, number four, um, number two or number four gold Aberdeen hook. And, uh, then we'll run our half crawler on that. And then when I'm fishing, when I'm dragging that thing along the bottom, my bail's open, I'm holding on the line with my finger. And as you know, as that thing's kind of just cruising along the bottom and you feel a bite, I just let my finger go and feed them some line. And then what happens is that egg sinker will lay on the bottom and they can feed that line through that egg sinker and not feel a thing. They have zero resistance. Uh, and hopefully, you know, at that point, then they take that final, you know, gulp or whatever you want to call it, suck the rest of that hook and that worm in and then flip the bale over, you know, feel for some weight and then go ahead and set the hook. And a lot of times you don't have to set it real hard um, because it's you know already down their throat for the most part. So. Uh, just another thing that I like to do. And then when you get into scenarios where the wind's blowing upriver and the current's kind of at a stalemate, um, the nice thing with a Click Carolina rig is you can really troll that thing, you know, either up current or down current, um, and, you know, depending on obviously which way you want to go. But uh, it, it makes it a little bit easier to fish uh, when you have different wind scenarios. Um, Greg asks, hi Troy, do you think the white bass run will peak around Mother's Day as usual, or do you think it will be earlier this year because of the warmer water? You know, that's, it's hard to say, Greg, you know, we're, we're a couple weeks ahead of schedule. I'd say typically uh, around my birthday, you know, it's April 21st and typically around then is when we're starting this, you know, the majority of, of the spawn is happening um you know around that middle you know that third week of april or so uh so we are definitely a few weeks ahead of schedule um now it's really going to depend on what happens with the weather i mean if we get in 70s and almost 80 degrees by the weekend and it starts to uh you know and it continues to stay that way um you know we might see a good uh, a good run of white bass come up early but you know i'm, I'm not the biologist i can't answer this but I look at, you know, these fish, these walleyes are, are spawning a little bit earlier than normal. And a lot of that has to do, obviously, with water temperature. But I think there's still a, a, a period of time that these eggs have to develop and mature. You know, just like anything else, you know, you can't, uh, you know, whether it be nine months for a human to be born or 63 days for a dog, um, you know, it's... It, it just doesn't happen because of water temperature. I think there's some other science in that to it too. And uh, you know, that might be something that'd be good to to ask a biologist and try and get an answer. But uh, right now, if I'd have, if I'd have to take a guess, I'm going to say they're going to be a little bit earlier, um, but it's really all going to depend on weather. Um, you know, obviously now we've got some current and some, uh, some stuff to draw these fish in, um, but we still haven't, uh, we still haven't seen anything come up the river yet. Just starting to see, you know, a couple here and there. Typically, that doesn't happen until, you know, that end of April. Um, so we are a little bit earlier in seeing a couple, but I'm not, I'm not too worried yet. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. Stay tuned. I'll, uh, I'll keep you guys posted for sure. Um, and, you know, William Nelson, you know, just get out there and try it, and that's it, man. That's all you can do is go out and fish. Um, you know, rather than asking, and I'm not taking, don't take this the wrong way, but 
a lot of times people, you know, ask, hey, how's the ice conditions or how's the fishing or how's this, how's that? And, you know, my response a lot of times is just go and figure it out for yourself, you know, go out and do it. And the nice thing is, is when you do that, you don't have to report back to anybody. You can capitalize on it and take advantage of something that you find by yourself and, uh, you know, and, and have fun for a while before somebody else figures it out. So, um, hey, again, don't take that the wrong way. I'm not telling you, you know, I love sharing information. That's what this is all about. Um, and I'll gladly share everything. So, um, but sometimes it's just nice to go out and, you know, just explore and have some fun. Um, uh, Bob, yep. But I use small bullet weights like you'd use for, for bass fishing. And Rob, I use, I use the bullet weights as well, just because it cuts the current, uh, you know, those little egg sinker bullet weights. Um, and if you really want to get crazy and, um, you know, slow things down a little bit. Obviously, you can use some small tungstens too, those little bullet tungstens, but those get kind of expensive, especially when you're fishing a lot of brush. Um, you kind of go through them a lot. The nice thing about fishing those uh, those Carolina rigs with a gold Aberdeen is that they um, they very seldom get, you know, you, you don't get snagged because one, uh, you're going to typically bend the hook out um, so you don't lose a whole lot. And with that Carolina rig, the sinker itself is bu- going to bounce over everything. It really never gets hooked up. Whereas if you got a jig and that thing's bouncing over the wood and turns, well, then it'll get, ho- it'll get hooked on some wood and uh, you get hooked up a lot um, uh, a lot more uh, with, a, with a jig than you do with Carolina rig. Uh, are the gills in the bag of canals? So, Jesse, that's a great question. I know some guys are getting a few. I don't know where. Uh, the problem is, is that I cannot get my boat into a lot of these channels right now. Um, I was going to try and get the boat in the water here next uh, next couple of days out on Bago and go see, you know, how much the water's come up or uh, whatnot. But I do know some guys were out over the weekend and we're getting stuck trying to get into some of these channels. So uh, unless you're fishing from shore um, and... Uh, <laughs> don't flood my zone over here but the locals um now you know what's funny fish is that uh you know i've lived around the fox you know my basically my entire life and i've never gone up and fished up in that part of the neck of the woods and um i know it's really good fishing and uh i'd love to get up there and learn that more but i just i never find the time to do it and uh i'd love to do it more so you know even just for the for the panfish. I know there's a lot of great panfish spots up there and obviously some great catfish holes and that, but uh, just never have taken the time to do it. So um, probably don't have to worry about me coming up by you. I got a lot of places I'd like to learn and just don't have the time to do it. Uh, Scott says all the gates are open in Menasha. That's just crazy. I wish they would shut these things down and let this water come up, um, fill up the lakes. And then once it's full, then let, uh, you know, then control the water. But you know, you're killing, you know, everybody's killing our spring fishing spots and we can't get into any of these places. And um, I, I guess it's good for the fish, but uh, sure would be nice to be able to um, to get out there and, and enjoy some of this fishing. Uh, not only that, but, you know, you spend all this money to live on the lakes and these channels and these guys can't get their boats in. Uh, I'd be pretty furious if I uh, spent that kind of money and I uh, wasn't able to put my dock or my boat in because there's no water. So, um, oh, well, <laughs> I don't make the, I don't make the rules. Um, let's see. What else do we got? Um, you know, with all that snow and rain, uh, you know, what, like I say, the water did come up quite a bit in the river. I bet you we're up four feet. Um, and, uh, What's with the DNR chicken or ideas on walleyes in the Winnebago system? Um, I don't know, Bruce. What are you talking about? Bruce asked, what's with the DNR chicken or ideas on walleyes in the Winnebago system? Um, and Bruce, I guess you elaborate. I don't know what you're talking about there. I, I'm, I guess I've missed something. Hey, Justin. Yep, we were just talking about that. The walleyes are super thick and the river's up by Green Bay now. Um Okay, let's so let's go back to Ocano. Uh, we kind of got off track there, but so we fished out in the lake and uh, we got a lot of nice fish trolling. And you know the kids' fingers got cold, and um, uh, Bud was getting a little tired. And we we're coming back in, and as we got close to to the mouth of the the river and we started going up the river, I could not believe how many fish had moved in 
uh, in the four hours that we were out in the in the bay. Uh, and then I talked to some guys uh, the next day, and they said, absolutely. You know, the fish just showed up, um, a ton of fish in the river, and they were just whacking the snot out of them. So, um, you know, if you want to go catch, you know, your chance at uh, some true trophies right now, whether it be Ocanto, the Menominee, you know, De Pere, you know, on the Fox, uh, you know, now's the time to do it. I know up in the Fox, the water got really dirty over the weekend um, and, you know, makes fishing really tough. And uh, it's it can be difficult to catch fish when the water is that dirty. Um, up by Ocanto and Menominee, the fish or the water was actually fairly clean yet. Um, little, you I mean, there was obviously a little mud, but, uh, not, nothing like what the Fox, uh, typically is. Um, and there are a lot of, a lot of fish, a lot of fish being caught. Uh, you can go and fish from shore. Uh, one of our, you know, my buddy Nate was up there the same night we were and, um, fishing from shore up by the dam in Ocano and catching a lot of nice fish. I know they had some, uh, fish, you know, over the 30 inch mark and, uh, really some big fish up there and it's always a good time. A little bit more of a drive for the guys around here in the valley, and uh, but it's definitely worth it if you're if you're wanting to try out uh, some big fish. Uh, Justin's saying the O'Connor River um, is very good yet. Uh, fish to O'Connor using sink tactics as a wolf. Uh, Jacob, yes and no. You know uh, the biggest thing with uh, fishing up in O'Connor is you know, you don't have um, you know the it's not like a wolf river. Um, a lot of the times, you know, you're going to find the guys up by the dams, you know, just casting more, more so like what you would do to fish the Fox River. Um, hair jigs, uh, big long stick baits, casting, you know, jerk baits and stuff, um, fishing, uh, you know, plastics, blade baits, you know, any of that kind of stuff, um, it, you know, typically works, works pretty well. Uh, you know, whereas the Wolf River, um, you're using a lot smaller baits and um, just uh, it's a completely different game when you're up on up on Green Bay system. All the tribs up there, it's typically a lot bigger, a lot bigger baits, a lot bigger fish. Um, let's see. Craft's been doing real good this year. Uh, Travis, any reports from the Fox Today water cleanup? Uh, Travis, I... I did talk to one guy and it cleaned up just a little bit, but uh, I guess it's still pretty dirty. I was trying to see if I could pull up the modus imagery, the, you know, the satellite to see how bad it was. Cause over the weekend, you know, not only did the, did the river get really muddy, but it went all the way out into the bay on all up along the whole East shore was just completely mud. Um, I don't know if anybody's seen that or not, but uh, it was, it was crazy. X wraps. So yeah, Justin was saying uh, X wraps have been doing really good. Uh, again, I've really you know become fond of these hit sticks from Berkeley. Um, I don't know what it is. You know they've got uh, that roll like a like a balsa bait does, um, but they're still a plastic. They cast really nice. They're weighted. Um, they've got the rattles and they've got uh, like I say that nice roll that you, it's real hard to get in a plastic bait. Um, they've done a really good job with that, uh, with that bait. And, um, you know, most of the colors are, are pretty decent as well, too. As people know, I'm not real fond of, you know, a lot of these custom guys that uh, are, all you know, these custom baits. Um, you know, I'm pretty much in, in the bold colors and uh, a lot of the uh, standard colors work just fine. But, um, yeah. <clears throat> Let's see any other questions here, Bruce. It was in the outdoors newspaper. I didn't see it, Bruce, so I don't I don't know exactly what you're talking about. Um, did anybody get a chance to go to the spring hearings at all um, in their area? I'm curious to see what uh, what was all talked about and said about some of these you know these regulations. Uh, if anybody was able to attend. Uh, be real curious to see on on you know what happened. Uh, Justin, we had 43 degrees. You know, we found a lot of spots, 41, 41 and a half, and uh, we just kept driving around till we found that you know a, a degree or a degree or two warmer water, and we found an area that had 43, and we're like, well, let's just set in here. You know, that one or two degrees sometimes just makes all the difference in the world. And as we were kind of driving around looking, you know, it was, the screens were crazy. It was, uh, it was pretty, pretty clear. And once we got into that little bit warmer water, 
um, it was uh, it was game on. There were fish everywhere. Um, and you got on the outside of that, and that water temperature dropped another degree, fish were gone. Uh, it, was, it was interesting to see, but kind of pertained to exactly what we were talking about last week with Adam when it comes time to finding fish up there. It's all based on water temperature. Same thing with on the wolf, you know, finding these fish up in, you know, two feet of water, foot and a half of water, where it's two degrees warmer is where all these fish have been sitting. You come out into the middle of the river and water temperature is, uh, um, you know, two, three degrees, sometimes four degrees colder. And uh, you get up on the edge where that sun's beating on the banks and, you know, trees and the grass and the mud. And uh, you get a little bit of warmer water temperature up there. And that's right where those fish go, especially before, the, you know, when they were still pre-spawn because they're going up there trying to ripen up their eggs. So um, just, you know, this time of the year, water temperature can make all the difference in the world. After the spawn, eh, you know, you're just, you just got to kind of find the fish. They're not going to be, I don't think, as picky. I don't ever find them to be as picky um, after they're done spawning. At that point, they're just kind of looking to get back out and uh, get back into the normal patterns. And I'm um, sure, you know, feeding wise, obviously the warmer the water, uh, the more apt they are to feed or their, you know, metabolism is going to be a little bit higher. But, uh, you know, pre-spawn is definitely where you really got to watch your water temperatures. Uh, wow, it was 47 two days ago here. Yeah, you know, um, eFish is uh, that on the Fox uh, down by him. Uh, we're talking about the Fox up in Green Bay and then up in Ocano and out on, the, out on Green Bay itself, too, is where we're finding the 43 degrees. Um, you know, up on the Wolf. You know, we're, at, we're like I say, we're finding 48 to 50 degrees, depending on where you're at. Um, I know today it was uh, just under 49. Um, I'm sure probably towards the evening here as that sun was kind of coming out, uh, it's probably going to hit that uh, 49, 50 degrees again. And it'll cool down a little bit at night. And then by tomorrow, um, you're going to see it go well into the 50s tomorrow. But uh, again, the turtles are out cruising around on the logs. The frogs are chirping. And uh, that's always the sign of the spawn being close to done or, you know, right at being done. And that's when we'll typically start, you know, switching over to crawlers and uh, start fishing more of the, the fast current spots and um, start dragging crawlers along these long straightaways. So um, probably only got a couple of days left of, of catching them up super shallow. And, uh, you know, if the water was higher and these fish come out of the trees, that was always my favorite bite is casting crankbaits into the trees, but there's just not enough water right now for those fish to get truly up into the trees. They're getting to the edges of the banks and that's really about all the further they can go. Um, the water just isn't quite up high enough yet. So um, that's really what I know as far as what's happening on the system. Um, it uh, Again, it's going to be changing here, I think pretty rapidly over the next few days with how warm the weather is supposed to be and uh, definitely get out and catch some of these fish um, while you can if you like river fishing because I think they're going to be back out in the lake here pretty soon uh, and then you'll start to see a lot of guys um, a lot of guys start trolling and stuff uh, for dragon collars you prefer mono or braid so Jacob I'm a, a big fan of braid pretty much in every situation and here's the reason why you know Anytime you're fishing currents, uh, when you're fishing monofilaments or fluorocarbon or braid, the thinnest diameter you can get away with, the better, because you cut the water. And when you're, you know, the only time that you can really get away with fishing uh, like a mono or a fluoro would probably be when you're dragging. And the reason being is because, you know, with, with monofilament, your line's going to float a little bit more. Fluorocarbon sinks braid you know depending on your braid but most of the braid will eventually sink too um but i'm still going to uh use the braid for the simple fact i can feel every little thing um you know and then we're using uh, a fluorocarbon leader uh down below once we get uh, past the swivel uh and i'm using a really thin diameter braid that cigar smackdown um because it cuts the current and I don't want any big loops in my line. And I want it to be more of a straight shot from, you know, the end of my rob tip down to the jig. And uh, I don't want any, you know, big sways or big loops. Uh, just because when you're dragging, especially, 
you want to be able to feel as soon as that fish picks up that crawler, comes and swims up and picks up that crawler. I want to feel it right away. And that way there I can either feed them some line or, you know, set the hook depending on, you know, what type of bite you got. So um, it uh, that's that's just my my opinion, my feeling. <clears throat> a little late to the party. How much has the water come up on Wolf River? Say free money. Oh, Travis, the, the I'd say in the last uh, few weeks here, we're probably up four feet, three to four feet um, from where we were when we first started. So it's come up a lot. Um, still not where it, you know ch typically is this time of the year. Um, it probably has another uh, good couple of feet left to go. Uh, so if we get a bunch of rain, you know that'd be nice. But from what I'm hearing and, and reading, the gates up in Needham and Ash are wide open, so they're draining this thing just as fast as it's trying to fill. So don't understand it, but I'm not going to get into that. Uh, when you're drifting the river, uh, do you do anything to keep from snagging every five minutes? <laughs> um, number one, it's about being vertical. Number two is watching your graphs to stay away from the wood. Uh, as much as I like fishing around wood, trying to vertical jig, around trees is typically never a good idea um the you know but the biggest thing is is find those areas that you can you know fish slip down the current and uh try and stay vertical and then once you start dragging crawlers um like what we were talking about going to that carolina rig with a small egg sinker or bullet sinker uh below a swivel and a fluorocarbon leader and a small hook um, that is about as snag proof as what you can get when it comes time to fish in the river. Um, you're going to be able to fish that Carolina rig through the timber and that a lot better than you would be able to, you know, say with uh, some of these jigs. Now you can try and use some weedless jigs. Um, I just, I don't like, uh, the hookup percentage that I get. I, I feel that when these walleyes are kind of tight lipped and really soft mouth, those wire, um those wire hook keepers or those wire brush guards or whatever that you want to call them that kind of protect the, the gap of the hook um, for bouncing over the wood i just think when these walleyes come in they don't have that strength or they're not you know grabbing down and biting hard enough um to be able to get a good hook penetration i'm um, sure it bounces off the wood but i just i i lose so many fish that uh i just don't use them much anymore um so again Carolina rig, if you're going to be drifting through the, through a bunch of area that has brush or just find some areas that is not as uh, snag, um, you know, there's not a whole lot of snags around on the bottom and just kind of, you know, stay away from that. Find those, find those sand flats, find those sandbars uh, or get up on some of these corners. And uh, as long as you don't have any brush around and, um, you know, I love pumping Dubuque rigs and, um it uh it's it that's a lot of fun and you always you know there's you always got that chance too to get two on at one time especially when you run into a pot of them um you get your big big jig down on the bottom and you got your fly up on top and if you got a school of fish coming through you know your fly gets eaten first kind of triggers the fish around them and you know the fish that are swimming around sees that jig below and you know they'll swim down and grab that that jig or you know when you set the hook on the fly and you're starting to bring it in uh, you know, fish, see other fish kind of flopping around and figuring out what the heck's going on. And then, uh, you know, get, get all excited and they'll chase that second jig down too. And, uh, plenty of times we've got two walleyes at a time and, uh, that's, that's always fun. Uh, I think I saw you below New London. Maybe. Yeah, Bruce, I've been, uh, fishing up in New London here in the last few days. Um, it's kind of been, uh, where we've been hanging out, launching out of Shaw's, um, and, uh, doing pretty well. How is everybody's weekend? Anybody else got any reports that they want to share? Uh, perch fishing or, uh, you know, anything. I know some guys are still doing really good over on the Mississippi. Um, it uh, Perch fishing has been pretty hot over there. Uh, some guys are getting some perch in the river in Oshkosh. Um, hey, Justin, thanks, uh, hey, thanks for, for tuning in. Let's get out and fish. Um, I'm going to work on, on those... Um, designs too for for uh, that steel for you i gotta finish my taxes first so i think that's a little bit more important <laughs> um <clears throat> you know if anybody's got anything else they'd like to share that'd be great too i know people always enjoy seeing what everybody else is doing and 
not just what I'm doing because you know right now I'm pretty much just chasing uh, chasing walleyes. Um, if you're looking at rigging boats or anything, I've got a few spots left. I've been doing quite a bit of rigging again this year. Uh, you know, trolling motors, batteries, you know, rewire jobs, whatever. Um, and my friends up at Sport Motive, if you didn't see the post, uh, they've got some great deals right now on some of the Humminbird electronics. Uh, not only that, but Humminbird's got that $500 rebate uh, going on. Um, so if you're looking at getting some new graphs on your boat now, it's definitely the time to do it. Um, it's uh, some great pricing, great deals, and you know you get uh, everything done here before we get into the heat of the season. Um, see, Mike, uh, how's it going? Mike, Pike on Little Lake Butamore, been focused since uh, ice fishing. Um, nice. Uh, Bob, no, I have not seen any catfish. Uh, we've been doing pretty good on some sturgeon. Um, the sturgeon this past weekend, I think was it Saturday or Sunday? Uh, no, Saturday. Uh, Saturday, the sturgeon were coming up really thick, and it seemed like every other cast would be hooked on the sturgeon. We landed uh, landed one, had a couple really big ones up to the boat, but uh, no go as far as uh, getting them out. Hooks came out. Uh, ahead of time what was what was funny is we brought in one sturgeon and uh boy i think it was probably about a four footer or so and so we get it in the net and um i go and try and take the jig out and his whole mouth was full of jewelry uh, i think he had four or five different jigs in his sucker um so it was a good thing we took the fish out got all those baits out of them and uh put them back you know fully clean but that guy was on a mission sucking everybody's baits in because he, he had everything. He had treble hooks, stingers, jigs, uh, plain regular hooks. Um, that thing was completely uh, completely loaded with jewelry and line and everything else. So um, it was good to, uh, good to get that one and get him cleaned up and back in the water. Um, let's see. Yeah, they are, uh, those sturgeon are fun. They, they definitely test the equipment. That's for sure. Um, I always like to say I tie a good knot after, you know, bringing in the sturgeon or whatnot. And it's always good to see that the line and the knots, uh, hold out well, because, uh, we've, we definitely put those things to the test. <clears throat> Uh, Travis asked with the water levels up and the increased current is pitching jigs cross current still working for you guys. Travis, no, um, the fish have definitely, uh, definitely moved away from the center of the river right now. And everything that we've been getting here the last couple days, Friday, you know, I'd say it was still really good casting cross current. And, um, the, uh, the last couple times out now has been kind of pitching, up into the shallows, um, fishing the trees, fishing the edges, you know, wherever there's some, some, uh, grass. Um, but, uh, it's definitely is the casting cross current is definitely slowed down. Um, you know, and I fully expect that too, is once, once they, you know, kind of get done doing their thing and they just start cruising down and it, you know, turns into a dragging game. Uh, Jeremy said Wolf in New London area was pretty good today. Two man limit plus some that went back, one being a 25 and a half. Jeremy, were you north of New London? I just got to ask because um, I, I knew some guys that went out and, um, you know, fished some of the areas where we were here the last couple of days and it, the fish were just gone. Um, you know, not really even marking a whole lot of anything. And uh, it was a lot slower and some guys struggled. Uh, but uh, I heard some guys that were north of New London and uh and south were were doing really well like i said last night uh you know below fleeces there uh they just absolutely whacked them on the on the rafts and all those big females you know a lot of 23 to 25 27 inch females were all dumped out and uh, that's a lot of what the guys were catching here today um so definitely a big pot of them moving through and uh i, I did hear some guys north of new london did really well as, as, as well too. So yeah, yes, North. Um, and that's exactly what I heard. Um, so those fish will be coming back down through and, 
the uh, fishing will get good um, here probably throughout the entire river over the next few days as stuff just kind of spreads out and uh, these fish start coming back down. Um, what else did we have? Um, Jeff asks if you've been using the ultra thin braid. I haven't got it yet. Um, I'm trying to figure out a uh, time to go down and pick it up. Um, just been so busy and, uh, I got to meet up with, uh, with one of our guys here and, and pick it up. So I haven't got it yet to try it. Uh, Travis said, same thing for me, I had a vertical jig to catch them Saturday. Yeah. It, it, the, the bite changed. I mean, they're, they're going from pre-spawn to post-spawn here pretty quick. And when that happens, everything changes. All your techniques got to change. Uh, Mike's asking if I want to go somewhere to catch a few walleye but not see 20 of the boats. Where could I go? <laughs> Mike, that's uh, that's a that's a trick question, buddy. Um, you know, if I were you, I you know, the Menasha Dam, the Nina Dam, um, I would expect that uh, you could get down there and go catch some. Um, now I don't know though with all that currents, you know, it's probably going to be a little bit different, difficult. Um, the, uh, you know, other spots you could go, um, you know, you could fish all the bridges or fish, you know, the, the trails and stuff down in Oshkosh, uh, the mouth of the river, um, a lot of places, you know, right now, short spots that are going to be good, good to go. Uh, Josh said, fish O'Connor on Saturday from one to seven. No one was catching anything, casting up shallow, decided a vertical jig with a shiner, ended up with eight eyes over 20. All came in 17, 18 feet of water. Oh, good job, Josh. Um, good job on, uh, you know, on changing things up and uh, trying something different. You know, that's what it's all about. And uh, let's see. Josh, were you up in the river more? Um, I'm guessing so, but. Uh, um just curious to see if you were in the river if you were out over um you know out on the shoal or out in the lake i think that's all the comments but uh yeah you know the next couple weeks guys things are gonna you know yeah i'm sure up on the bay you got through the weekends um probably gonna be some great fishing you know there's gonna be a lot of post spawn fish i doubt you're gonna catch many pre-spawners, um, you know, with how warm it's going to get. Uh, it's probably going to be a lot like what happened last year. I remember I was out with a couple guys last year up in Okano, and it got so warm. I think it was like 80-some degrees, and those fish went up into um, – went up into the river to spawn and got so warm, it turned right – they turned back around and were dying as they were floating back down the river because the water got so warm, and I think it just stressed them out. Um, so hopefully that doesn't happen again, but, uh, the way the weather is, you know, shaping up to be, I think, you know, 70 something tomorrow and again, seventies this weekend, uh, close to 80 maybe. And, uh, it's crazy. Uh, Jeremy says just got off the water. Rainbow park slow also hit sunset point at dark. Nothing but catfish. Okay. Oh, thanks for the report. Um, so there you go, guys, you know, Oshkosh, um, yeah, uh, he was out in Oshkosh checking that out. You know, I haven't heard. I've been talking to Rachel a little bit at Fox River, and uh, she's you know getting pretty stocked up with with everything you need, um, flies and a lot of Z-Man stuff. And uh, you know, she's going to be kind of my go-to person there for for taking care of a lot of the, a lot of the tackle that we're going to be using all summer um, with all the Z-Man stuff. She's got a great selection, <clears throat> but. Um, from what I've heard and, and talking to her and, you know, she's obviously seeing everybody daily, you know, a lot of small walleyes yet, um, nothing yet for, for white bass, but uh, there have been some really nice perch um, guys have been getting in the river closer to the mouth of Winnebago. Um, but uh, in Winnicani too, um, I, you know, obviously I head over there when I pick the kids up from school um, and in the river, there hasn't been anybody hardly fishing at all. So you know with that one that uh, when there's nobody in Winnicott, there's typically not many fish um, because when that lake or when that area has fish, uh, the bridges are full and the landing is full and the, the river is full. So, um, yeah, I think uh, by the weekend here, that'll change 
And obviously with the warmer weather too, you're just going to see guys getting out, but haven't heard a whole lot of anything happening down around Winnicott or Oshkosh as of yet. So um, it, uh, it'll get there. Um, I do know down uh, Fond du Lac area, um, you know, guys are fishing off the shore down by the park and getting some crappies. Uh, some of the marinas over on the east shore also guys are starting to get a few crappies. Um, so some of the shore fishing spots are starting to turn on and uh, that, that again is only going to get better. We just we need some more rain. We need them to quit draining the lakes and let these lakes fill up so we can uh, get out there and um, get on to some of these fish out in the lake. Um, boy, that's really all I got for you guys. Um, if you're looking to get out, uh, openings, um, uh, you know, during the week has been fairly, uh, fairly quiet. I've got uh, quite a few openings. I know next week, uh, starting to get a few guys, uh, booking during the week, but uh, still a lot of, a lot of openings yet to get out. Um, you know, whatever you want to go chase, we can do it. Uh, whether you want to go up to the bay or the wolf, um, you know, or get out on the, on the lake here and, um, try and get, uh, uh, try and get, you know, some pan fish and stuff. So, um, give me a, shoot me a message, give me a call, whatever you like, and, uh, see what I can do to help you out. Um, but, uh, that's it. I'll let you guys be. Thanks for tuning in. And, uh, don't forget next, let's see, what is today? Today is the ninth. Um, so next week, um, the 18th, we will have uh, the Ask uh, Game Warm. So I'd like I'll post something on the page. Um, if you guys can, just so we can kind of you know look at things ahead of time, uh, start at, you know putting some questions up, or even you know you can respond here too, and I'll write them down and 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 you know talk to them or trying to get the answers just to make sure that if we need to get some answers or do some investigating or research uh we have some time to do that but um really looking forward to having those guys on i know i've got a list of questions for these guys already too and um it'll be good to get some clarification uh you know right from the horse's mouth so um it uh should be a fun evening and uh, we're going to start a little bit early i believe we're starting at six o'clock so um, I will keep everybody posted there as well. So, um, Jim, a question for you. I'm a new owner of a bait shop. What are some good lures that fishermen are looking for? Hey, Jim, do me a favor. Send me a private message, um, with your contact information. And, um, maybe tomorrow I can give you a holler and, uh, we can, I can discuss or kind of help you out there and, um, send you some information and I'd like to learn a little bit more about your bait shop and where you're at to uh, see if I can help in, in any other way. So um, again, appreciate everybody joining in and uh, we'll see you out on the water and we'll see you guys next week. Have a good weekend, everybody. Good luck.